Hello, my name is Chris and today I want to talk about willpower, self-control, self-discipline and why we don't actually need any of it when it comes to making big positive changes in our life like quitting smoking or perhaps giving up alcohol or losing weight. And I want to share this because it is good news for those of us who believe that a lack of willpower is the one thing getting in our way of making those changes and achieving our goals. As if somehow if we only had as much willpower as other people everything would be okay, right? Wrong. That isn't necessarily the case. We do, don't need willpower in the way that we think we do. Let's take the example of quitting smoking. We make the decision that we are going to quit smoking and then one or two days in that terrible withdrawal process kicks in and we find ourselves craving a cigarette. So we try to stay away from that cigarette by exercising willpower. And we tell ourselves we're just not going to smoke and we're going to exercise willpower and that's going to get us away from the cigarette. The thing about exercising willpower is that it is like exercising anything. It becomes exhausting. The more we exercise it, the more tired we get. And we get so tired that eventually we have no more energy left to continue exercising that willpower. And we, get, we have so little energy left that when the thought is there, I should have a cigarette, we're powerless to do anything about it and we smoke the cigarette. Then we feel bad, not just physically, but also mentally as well, because we start beating ourselves up. Oh my goodness, I'm such a failure, I'll never be able to do it, I lack willpower, and because I lack willpower, I will never be able to quit smoking. My friends, that is just not true. You see, the thing about using willpower is that when we try and exercise willpower, all we are doing is trying to stay away from something that we don't want. When we might have a much easier and much better time moving towards the thing that we do want. When we focus on staying away from what we don't want, we are still focusing on what we don't want. Try this. Whatever you're doing right now, don't think of the colour blue. Do not think of the colour blue. Do not think of the sky or the sea or a blue beach ball. Do not think of the colour blue. The colour blue is bad. The colour blue is something you should not think about. Don't think about the colour blue. You're thinking about the colour blue, aren't you? And I just told you not to. That's okay. I forgive you because it is hard when you are focusing on what you don't want. It is still there and we are still drawn towards it. And we only have a finite amount of energy to resist. I have found along my journey that rather than trying to get more willpower to stay away from what I don't want, I have a far better time cultivating an overwhelming desire for the things that I do want. So in terms of quitting smoking, it stops becoming, I don't want to smoke and starts becoming, I want to be happy and healthy and free and come and hang out here by the water's edge having a good time. And the more I focus on, on what I do want, the more I cultivate an overwhelming desire for that, the more excited I get about it. And as I go through my day-to-day -day life, I start finding that the things I do are in alignment with what I do want. So it no longer become like I don't have to, if somebody shows me a cigarette today, I don't have to exercise willpower to stay away from that cigarette because I know that having a cigarette isn't going to help me get to what I want. I'm going to expand on this and I'm going to share with you two conversations that I've had in the past week that sort of triggered my thought process thinking about willpower and that made me realize that yeah we don't actually need it at all if our motivation if our desire for the things that we do want is strong enough what got me thinking about this in the first place was a conversation I had with someone last week 
and as I'm talking to them they were eating a bag of Oreo cookies and they said to me you must have amazing willpower I really admire that and it took me by surprise partly because this just seemed to come from nowhere we were talking about something completely different but mainly it took me by surprise because I don't see myself as having much if any willpower at all like if I had willpower in the first place I would have never have become so hopelessly addicted to nicotine and smoking if I had willpower I would have never have drank so much alcohol that it became a problem for me if I had willpower I would have never have gained so much weight go look at my earlier videos I was way heavier than I am now so I never see myself as having much willpower so I turned to this person I'm saying okay what do you mean How, why why did you say that and they said well I never see you eating cookies or cakes or sweet things I never even hear you talking about them so you must have amazing willpower to stay away from all this sugary stuff I thought no not really you see they were coming at this from their frame of reference like for them they love sugary things so if they decided that they wanted to lose weight or whatever and not have them they would have to resist this thing they would have to exercise willpower and resist eating these things somebody's just looking at me hi <laughs> whereas for me I don't need to resist the sugary things because I love being healthy and happy and working on achieving optimum health for a long-term basis far more than I would enjoy eating a cookie for 30 seconds I don't have to resist or use willpower to stay away from sugary foods because sugary eating sugary foods is not in alignment with what I want for my life I don't have to move away from sugary foods because I'm moving towards being you know achieving this level of optimum health I have this I've spent a lot of time cultivating this overwhelming desire for health so much so that it excites me I, I spent time visualizing writing out how my life would look once I've achieved my health goals making vision boards and pictures and spending time just playing with this vision in my head and it excites me it excites me so much that as I go about through my day I look for things that are going to help me achieve those goals so when I go to the store now I don't go down where all the sweets and cookies are and spend time like no I can't have them like because I don't need to do that I go to the store and I go and look for the things that are in alignment with what I want to achieve it's the same with quitting smoking I have this big bright visual in my head when I think about achieving optimum health I picture myself slim and healthy and getting lungs full of fresh air and I know that smoking is not in alignment with achieving that goal smoking doesn't serve a purpose so I no longer need to exercise willpower to stay away from a cigarette because instead I'm so excited about being healthy that I can choose instead to do things that move me towards that the second conversation I had took place this weekend it was my brother's wedding it was a long day and there was a lot of alcohol flowing like all day long and some of my regular viewers may know that I don't drink I'm a recovering alcoholic coming on for six years of sobriety so me and alcohol are just a no-go and it doesn't bother me I don't drink alcohol in the same way that I don't hop around on one leg all day because it just doesn't serve a purpose and I was talking to a group of people and the conversation turned to to alcohol and hangovers and things like that and a guy says points to me and says to everyone else I wish I had this I wish I had this guy's willpower meaning me and again I was like I don't have any willpower what is this thing you're thinking about and again it was because he was coming from his frame of reference he enjoys drinking alcohol he can do it relatively safely so for him to not drink alcohol would be mean resisting something 
that he wants. It would mean having to use willpower to stay away from something that he wants. Whereas I don't have to do that. For me, drinking alcohol is like putting my hand on a live electric fence. Drinking alcohol, for me, is like jumping out of a 10-storey building with no parachute on. It is dangerous. Whenever I do these things, bad things are going to happen to me. So I don't have to resist doing something that is bad for me. Instead, I can focus on cultivating a healthy, happy, sober life. And again, it is the same with smoking. Smoking is dangerous for me. The more I smoke, the more damage I'm going to do to my body. My lungs are going to be filled with poison, I'm going to have low energy, I'm going to feel like crap, I'm going to look like crap. Plus, I'm going to increase the chance that I get heart disease or lung cancer or something like that. When I put it that way, that doesn't seem like something that I need to resist. <laughs> I don't want that, I don't want to, fo I don't even need to focus on not doing that because instead what I'm focused on is, is being smoke free and sober and healthy. I'm focused on having lungs, lungs full of fresh air, of being outside, enjoying my life. I don't need to resist smoking because it is like if I have a cigarette, I might as well just go and jump out of a 10 story building because neither of those two things are going to end well for me. Whereas focusing on, on exercise and healthy living and things like that, that excites me. And I can focus on doing things that excite me rather than things that are just going to do me harm. Look, I'm not saying that I never get tempted by anything. Of course I do, I'm only human. I go to the store, I may not go down the aisle where all the cakes and the sweets are because there is nothing there that is going to help me achieve my goals. But I sometimes go to the store and at the very front, they're like, look at these new donuts that we've got. Come and buy these donuts, they're awesome. And I look at these donuts and think, yeah, they look nice, I bet they're delicious. And then I walk away. Now, if I had to use willpower to resist eating that donut, what I would do is I would spend the rest of my time in the store having an argument with myself about why I should or shouldn't have these donuts. I'd then go home and beat myself up and go, oh, I should have had the donut. Yeah, but I shouldn't have had the donut. Oh, but I should have had the donut. <laughs> you get this, oh, this madness going on inside my head. And I would wear myself down thinking about these donuts so much, I would exercise my willpower so much that I would become exhausted, and eventually I'd go back to the store and I'd get the donuts. But I don't use willpower to stay away from the donuts. I use my goals, my dreams, my overwhelming desire for health and happiness. When I see the donuts, I acknowledge it. Do you know what? Those do look nice, but they don't serve a purpose for me right now. They, those donuts are not going to help me achieve this thing that excites me so much. So I walk away from the donuts and I just don't think about them ever again until I make a video. And now I really want donuts. <laughs> If I could give you any piece of advice today, it would be that. It would be to cultivate this overwhelming desire for the things that you do want and take action towards achieving that. With quitting smoking, if you think that you lack willpower, that is okay. Because all willpower is going to do is to keep you away from something that you don't want. But how much time have you spent actually focusing on what you do want? Turn this video off and get that big, bright mental picture in your mind. Write it down, draw it, paint it. Make a vision board. Whatever you need to do to cultivate this idea that excites you so much about what life is going to be like when you don't smoke or after you've lost weight or after whatever goal you're trying to use willpower to achieve. And one last thing. For those of you 
right in the early stages and you are craving a cigarette and thinking this is all well and good but what do I do in that moment when I'm just so desperate and you think that you really do want a cigarette what I want to ask you is when you are in that moment and you are craving do you really want an actual cigarette do you want to put the thing to your lips and fill your lungs full of poison do you want to cough do you then really want to feel bad about having that cigarette afterwards or is the thing that you really want when you are craving just something that will make that discomfort go away for me it's always the latter when I was craving cigarettes I wasn't actually craving actually having a cigarette I just wanted something that would make the withdrawals and the cravings go away and my default process for so long to change the way how I felt was to have a cigarette but we don't have to do that anymore we can find other things to change the way we feel that are going to help us out long term thank you so much for watching I hope this video has been helpful to you in some way I hope I haven't been rambling today I had a, a mountain bike accident a couple of days ago and I banged my head I've had a head injury for a couple of days so I'm not at my best right now so I'm just going to have to hope that this video has helped you in some way thank you very much for watching do let me know how you are getting on on your journey in the comments below and of course we have the new Facebook group finding freedom I will put the links in all the usual places thanks to those of you who have joined up so far we are supporting each other along our journey and it is awesome for more weekly videos like this one please do subscribe and of course likes and shares are always always appreciated thank you again for watching I will see you next time goodbye